Welcome back to another chapter of Small as an Elephant by Jennifer Richard Jacobson. So when we left off on chapter, at the end of chapter one, uh, Jack is uh, looking for his mom and he's also looking for something to eat. In uh, this next, at the end of the chapter, he had asked the attendant at the store as to where uh, he could probably get some hot dogs. And so chapter two starts off at that point. <laughs> Seawall camping supplies didn't look like any store Jack had ever visited. It was a cabin with a porch and everything and had signs all over it. Hot showers and lobster pound, read one sign. Another said, it's cooler on the coast. He would have felt nervous about walking into the strange place if not for a third sign that read, Coin-Operated Showers Inside Store. Change at the counter. The sign made him laugh, and he wished his mother was there to share the joke. A rack of stuffed animals greeted him just inside the door. Lobsters, seals, moose, and black bears. But... No elephants. The deck-like wooden floor creaked as he ambled among maps and maple syrup, fishing line and gold fish crackers all jumbled together to the counter where a woman in an apron was waiting to take his order. How much are the hot dogs? Jack asked. You can have two dogs, chips, and a small soda for four dollars, she said. Red ones? Of course, what do you want on him? Mustard, he said, taking a five out of his pocket and then, before handing it over, asking, can I buy a paper too? The woman nodded at the pile of newspapers by the door and added the price of a Bangor Daily News. Jack sat down at a table on the porch to wait and scan the headlines, barely giving himself enough time to read the words. Breathe, he reminded himself after a moment, the way his mother would. What's the worst that could have happened? Car accident? Definitely. The only thing he knew for sure was that his mother had taken the car. She'd taken the P Prius and had headed off somewhere this morning. Last night? As soon as I fell asleep? And although she was a good driver, in fact, it was her job, driving a shuttle for the in-town inn. He figured anyone could speed off these twisty island roads. Black bears caught his eye, but it was an article about a football team and not wild animals. Another headline about a missing nine-year-old girl stopped him. Did adults get kidnapped? Jack was reading the story when the woman brought his food. Scary, isn't it? She said, glancing down at the paper. Sure hope they find her safe and sound. Jack nodded, thinking about his mom and pushing the paper away. He took a bite of his hot dog and heard the snap. The snap his mom had told him about. The snap she was supposed to show him. Show him and laugh about. She was supposed to show him the hot dog stick casing and its candy apple color. Then they were supposed to eat and laugh and talk about the first time she'd ever had a red hot dog in Maine. He felt heaviness in his arms and put the hot dog down. Dang it, these were supposed to be the best three days of his whole summer vacation. The ones that were going to make up for all the long boring days he'd spent in their nothing-to-do apartment. Mom, in her exploding firecracker way, had borrowed equipment, read online reviews, made lists of all the best places to eat, circled maps, and even downloaded music for the car ride. She could hardly stop talking about Sand Beach, Thunder Hole, and all the other great things she wanted to see on this trip. Where was she? 
Why had she taken off when they were already had more things on their list than they could possibly do? He could imagine her going off to get something, some last minute thing they needed to make this trip absolutely perfect. And then meeting someone interesting, someone who made art out of sea sponges or wrote the messages in juice bottle caps. She would be unable to pull herself away. Can you believe it, Jack? She'd say. He sits in an office all day thinking of what to write inside those tops of bottles. Yeah, okay, but why take the tent? She would have some train of reasoning, no doubt, but she thought this and then that occurred to her. But then it would be one thought sparking another until all the ideas burst into flames. Or so it seemed to Jack. It didn't even make sense to try and figure it out. He knew that by now. Sometimes he couldn't even follow the thoughts after, she explained. And now the whole morning was shot. Well, he wasn't going to just sit around and wait. Not this time, dang it. She could go off and have her amazing time. He was going to have his own adventure. He was on Mount Desert Island, and he hadn't even put his toes in the ocean yet. He'd changed that. He cleared off his table, leaving the newspaper for someone else to read, and walked across the street to where lots of people had pulled over to escape their cars and teeter along the tumbling rocky shore. The day was growing steamy, and the ocean air smelled like warm olives. Jack bounced from the dry, sea-worn stones down to the darker, seaweed-covered boulders below. As he did, he couldn't help examining each group of tourists. The large family with the grandfather holding on to the shoulders of twin boys to balance himself. Two girls in green camp t-shirts who stood outside their camp group, uninterested in the wildlife in the tidal pool. A bunch of older women sitting around a flat rock as if it were a table and sipping something from a thermos, all while searching for his tall, willowy mother, her cropped blonde hair. He didn't bother to search the more remote edges of the beach. She hated being alone. A boy about Jack's age, 11, but with shorter hair and a wide smile of bright white teeth was tossing a frisbee with his little sister. The girl's long blonde hair whipped across her face as she flung the disc into the air. Neither had much of a throw. The frisbee kept smacking nearby rocks, sometimes getting wedged between them. It didn't matter. It was impossible to run on this treacherous beach, and both of them laughed at the senselessness of the game. So did their parents who were watching from stone chairs. Ah, Jack wished he could be that boy, a kid who had nothing more to worry about than where his frisbee landed, a boy who could make his parents happy just by playing a silly game. Then he immediately took it back. His mom was cool, real cool. Consider then a lot of other moms, cooler than a lot of other moms. He promised himself he'd tell her that when she returned. She definitely wasn't on this beach. Should he go back to the campsite in case she was there? Nah, he thought. She'd know to look for me here. He'd stay. Give her time to come down. He imagined her sneaking up behind him, surprising him from here. He took off his sneakers and socks then peeled off his shirt and carefully wrapped his phone inside it. He tucked the bundle in a dry crevice of a fairly large boulder. Maybe once he got down to where the tide had receded, he'd even be brave enough to swim. Though it didn't look as if anyone else was even thinking about going near the foamy, churning water. At the first bright algae green tidal pool he came to, Jack picked up a snail and examined its shell. Then he crouched, preparing to pick up a crab. 
It'll pinch you. Jack looked up. The frisbee kid and his sister had come up beside him. Not if I pick it up from behind, said Jack. He carefully positioned his fingers on the back of the crab's shell. The boy sister squealed as Jack lifted the crab into the air. He waved its, it waved its pincers frantically. He's so big, said the girl. Isn't he, Aiden? Used to be huge until the elephant child shrank it, thought Jack, remembering a story his mother had told him. Eventually, Jack let the crab go, and without saying a word, he and Aiden leapt from one slippery rock to the next toward the water, while Aiden's sister wandered back toward her parents. They dipped their feet into the freezing cold sea until Aiden's parents called them away from the dangerous surf, and then they whipped seaweed at each other's legs instead. Jack imagined his mother standing on the shore, watching, smiling at their foolishness. He started to ask Aiden if he wanted to build a castle out of rocks, when Aiden's father called down to say that they were leaving. Are you staying at the campground? he asked instead. Aiden nodded. Me too, Jack said. Maybe I'll see you at the ranger's talk tonight, Aiden replied then ran up to catch up with his parents. Jack watched Aiden's family gather their things and walk away together. Aiden's mom draped her arm over Aiden's shoulder. Jack walked over to his shirt and checked on his phone, praying for a message. Nothing. He scanned the beach one more time, hoping to see her face. No such luck. It's okay, he told himself, tucking his phone back into his pocket. It hadn't been that long. He looked down at the rocks on the beach, the rocks that only an hour or so ago had been almost completely underwater. As he looked at them now, he saw something. A bird's eye view of elephants. A whole herd of them. The smooth, darker rocks were grayish-brown, some with speckles. One particularly rounded rock looked just like the back of the leader. The rock called to him. Jack climbed back down and lay upon its warm surface. He remembered the first time his mother had taken him to see an elephant. He had been really little, no older than four. They'd been... They'd been at, the, at a circus and he'd hated it. Hated the chaotic music, the sudden snap of the ringmaster's whip, the diamond-eyed clowns. So she carried him away from all that and into another tent. A tent where the most enormous animal he had ever seen stood only a few feet away. Jack had whimpered and buried his face in his mother's neck, but he couldn't resist pecking at the huge creature, peeking at the huge creature. And then the elephant had reached toward him with her trunk, reached toward him and tapped him on the shoulder. He'd squealed and plunged back under the cover of his mother's chin. But the elephant had tapped him again, and kept on tapping him until he lifted his head and looked over at her. Slowly, slowly, she'd reached out her trunk again and touched his cheek. Jack remembered giggling, remembered feeling as if the elephant ten tent were the safest place in the world. Jack lay face down on that rack, rock until he'd pulled every last bit of heat from it, and then he meandered back to the campground. He strolled past the wooden registration hut with its pointy roof and welcoming porch. No Prius in the parking lot.
past the signs below towering trees that directed drivers to the proper loop in the thick, scrubby woods, past the entrance to the outdoor amphitheater, to a loop. He decided to take the long way around the circle. He told himself that if he was extra patient, if he remained calm and hopeful, if he walked slowly enough around the shady A loop, checking each and every site for the car, his mom would be back. As he turned to the right, he heard Aiden's voice and his little sister's too. Julie, he remembered Aiden calling her and realized that they were the family that had hung an enormous blue tarp over their entire campsite, protecting it from rain. He was tempted to pop through the brush to make their site particularly private and say hi, but didn't want to draw too much attention to himself, didn't want Aiden's parents to start wondering who this kid was anyway, and why he was just hanging out all alone. Plus, he didn't want to break the spell. But it wasn't to be. His hubba was still the only thing on his sight. Anything wrong? Junk. Jack jumped. He'd been so intent on seeing his mom, willing her to appear right there at the picnic table, waiting for his return, that he hadn't heard the park ranger come up from behind him. She was dressed in a gray uniform with a badge and carried a clipboard. Her face was slightly wrinkled. Her eyes were kind. At this point, any other kid would tell the ranger that his mom was missing, that he had no idea what had happened to her. Then the adults would take over. They'd ask questions and put out a missing persons report. Someone would take him in and feed him dinner while they looked for her, and they'd probably find her. If not tonight, then soon. But Jack wasn't any kid, and his mom wasn't just any mom. Nope, said Jack, placing his hands in his pockets. Everything's good. Chapter 3 All right. We're going to stop there and we will continue this story later.